Hello and welcome to the second part of the flagpole. On this part we're going to focus around the simulation here. So let's start in Houdini. And important here, if you remember, was setting up the group nodes. So if we go all the way back here, we have a group node called flag. So this is very important now. So I can use a split node and I can split geometry. So based on the group called flag, I can now separate my geometry. So now I only have extracted the flag geometry. So with that, we're going to remesh our geometry. So I want more topology to work with. So this is just a plane, so that won't do much in the simulation. So we need to add more of that geometry. So we can do a remeshing, which will add more. You can also do other things. The remesher is often very useful here. And afterwards, you can always play around with the amount. Now, continuing here, I would like to have a group. And in this group, I want to say which uh, points should be animated in the simulation. So I'm going to call this static. So everything in here should be static and not simulated. Now, with our geometry here, I have these clamps. If you remember correctly, I made these clamps. And I would love these clamps to be influenced on my flag. So I'm going to add a group here so I can access them afterwards as well. And I'm just going to call them clamps. So we're going to do the same thing here where we can just do a split note or you can also do a blast note. So we're going to blast everything away. That is not a clamp group. So clamps. So invert that and I will only have the clamp pieces. Now in this group note, I would like to have the overlapping areas now. So where we overlap with our flag and the clamps, those need to be my static points. So we're going to go in the group and set it to points first of all. Then we're going to disable the base group and we want to use bounding boxes. We don't want to build in the, the default bounding box type. We want to use the input. So we're going to say bounding object. So this will make use of the input of the second. So now actually the overlapping points are selected and this is extremely useful now for my simulation. So with that we can now place a clot constraint. So we're going to use vellum. And we're going to just start with a basic clot configuration here. So you just can type in clot. And then this is basically setting up base values for the simulation. So this is a type of clot and there are some other types you can play around with. But we're going to stick to clot here. So the first thing I want to do here is to fill in my static group into pin animations. So everything in here will not be simulated. So this is working directly with the group node. You can also see here that they also have like this sphere around them. So these are not simulated uh, in the vellum. So when I place now a solver, a vellum solver, this will actually calculate the simulation, the clock simulation. So we can plug in all the dots here. And then we can already do uh, a simulation if we want to. So we can bring up our timeline and we can press play and we can wait for a basic simulation. So currently not much is happening. You can see like there is a very little deformation on that plane. So we probably want to set some proper values in the clot sim. So if we're gonna go to, for example, the stretching and we're gonna increase here the rest length. So now if I want to reset my simulation, we can also press reset there. We should have something like this. So this will increase more wrangles and this already creates a bit more interesting shape, but maybe uh, it's a bit too much. As you can see here, like there is a lot of deformation going on now. So we can go back to our rest length and maybe go to a 1.2 value. And this already looks way better. So this is a bit more subtle and looks nicer. Now we can also go here in the remeshing and have more topology to work with in the simulation. So if I lower this, this might be able to give us better results. So like more details in the wrinkles and so on. And as you can see, like this is already giving me indeed some like better results uh, in my simulation. Further, you can also play around with simulation pipes. So we cannot cache the data. And we can also, as you can see, like the, the blue line is gone, so it's not cached. And we can also play around with different types of data. So this is another type of simulation you could play around with. So it's up to you 
what you have the best results with or what you prefer. So I'm also going to now uh, reset it back to what I had before. So you can just choose and I can also use a wind simulation. So by default, there is some option here for the wind. So I can set a small value like three. And when I press play, we have some basic wind simulation going on, like you can see here. Very simple, nothing special. Just if you want some quick wins, you can enable that here. Now, very interesting with the solver is we can actually double click and go into this network. And in here, we can place new nodes to add more different properties, like for example, a pop attract. So this will attract on a certain position. So if I go into forces and I give it a huge amount, it's will gonna go to point zero. So it will sort of like attract every clot to point zero here. So you can see that we have these flags going in that direction. So if you are a bit more familiar with Vellum or you wanna get more familiar, you can build a quite interesting setup here to have something more unique and interesting. So this, these are some very basic things you can do in Vellum. Now, when, once you're finished, you can also do a post-processing of Vellum. So this is a note to quickly add some more uh, subdivisions or blur it or an extrusion. So here we can, for example, add an extra subdivision. Uh, if you want to blur it, you can blur it, but you might blur out some details. So you might gonna keep that very subtle. And once we are done, we can then merge the flags back with our flag pole. So we're gonna grab the split output and merge those back again. So now we have this as a result. And we're almost done here, but we can also do a normal node. So we're gonna add normal. So depending again on what normals you would like to have, we can play around with that. So it works in other software nicely as well. We can also do an FBX exporter here. If you want to bring this into Unreal or any other software, uh, you can bring that in. You can also make sure it maybe enable or disable certain settings depending on what software you use. Uh, you might want to change a few of that. So, but this is overall, this is my flagpole with the procedural approach of modeling with also a procedural approach into the simulation to create this. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.